morning. Good morning. And welcome as we gather for worship uh, in person and online. Uh, today, as you've gathered by now, is you Sunday. Today is the day when our young people uh, lead us in worship. And uh, we'll also have a Cub Scout recognition for our recently established Troop 1517. Now, is it my imagination or are people sitting closer to the front today? <laughs> oh well, it's a good time to be close to the front. We look forward to our young people as they lead us in worship. Now, uh, our schedule will, starts to change this week. Uh, we begin Lent on Ash Wednesday, and uh, this year our Ash Wednesday service will be at 1210, and we will have guest pastors as we, did, we, as we have done in the past. And the services will be recorded, and they'll be online for later in the evening. There won't be an evening service. Uh, basically, uh, we just do the live service uh, at noon. Uh, that'll be followed by lunch, and there's a sign-up sheet to help uh, prepare lunch and serve lunch. And if you have any questions, you ask and pray. We, one, spot one spot left. Well, hurry up, you know, get it while it's hot. Yeah, <laughs> what, just one left. Okay, and that means... Our regular Wednesday night activities, except for Ash Wednesday and Holy Week, will be as they always are, because we won't be having that service live in the evening. And on Sunday, during Lent, we will also have a, a, a sermon, a series, uh, a, a Journey of Stones. It's a series some will remember. We did it many years ago now uh, on, on Wednesday nights. The thing about Wednesday night series is nobody gets to do them on Sundays. So, and folks like really appreciated that service. It, it, it was a blessing for us, and we will do that on Sundays this year. We have some folks on our prayer concerns today. Uh, John Balaka, Linda Sack, Diane Costello, Steve Rhodes, Stephanie Hunter, Peggy Borshert, Barney Walker, and Harry Pun. Also, the ladies are collecting the personal care kits, and all you need to know about those, are, it's in your bulletin, or you can call Monica Proctor, and all the answers are there. And I believe those are the announcements. So let's begin our worship service. Children of God, welcome. Welcome to this place of love and grace. Welcome to this place of hope and perseverance. Praise the Lord with all that you have. We are ready to praise the Lord with all our heart and soul. For God is with us throughout all our lives. May our hearts be filled with love and strength as we respond to God's awesome love for us.
Let us confess our need for change before our God. Lord, we think of ourselves first. We have hardened our hearts to the suffering of others. Soften our hearts with love. Focus our eyes upon justice and open our ears with compassion. The love of Christ revealed in Christ Jesus, crucified and risen, proclaims forgiveness to us all. Go forth changed and forgiven, that we may once again serve God and our neighbors. Forgiving God. Life swirls around us. So many things are happening in our lives. We can be so easily distracted and overwhelmed. Remind us again that you are with us. Offering compassion, strength, courage, and hope. Help us to the place to place total trust in you as we offer our prayers and healing, comfort, and hope today. Place your he healing hand on our hearts and spirits and encourage us to rise up and be strong and hope for others. Enable us to be partners in ministries of peace in this world of darkness. Bring your light and power to us. We pray in Christ's name, amen. Now normally this is when we would have our children's sermon, but seeing as we're kind of in charge, they will have a parent's sermon. So parents, come on up. Good morning. 
morning, adults. This morning, we would like to talk about hope. What is hope? <laughs> Today's culture tells us that hope is just wishful thinking. When asked what we hope for, these are some of, ans some of the answer of our answers. I hope to be a teacher. I hope to see somebody I haven't seen in a long time. I hope to someday have a family. I hope to go to heaven. I hope to be a good athlete. I hope to have a good life and be healthy. I hope the world gets better. What are some things that you are hope for? <laughs> Jesus. Correct. <laughs> Really what is hoped for may or may not happen. We need our parents' help to understand and navigate the difference between our culture's view of hope and our hope in Jesus. Hope is an essential part of our faith. Hope in our Lord gives us strength. Strength and confidence to face any challenge that comes our way. Hope teaches us patience. We do not need to be anxious or worried. Hope in our Lord brings encouragement. Encouragement and joy amid life struggles because we will live forever with Jesus. In the New Testament book of Hebrews, the anchor is a symbol of hope and stability for the Christians in the storm of life. Here's an anchor to keep in your pocket or your wallet as a reminder of that hope. All right, now that y'all have gotten your anchors, you can go back to your children now. All right, boys, today we're honored to have among us some boys who have completed the requirements for the Bobcat Badge. The Bobcat Badge is an important part of the Cub Scout Trail, as is the foundation upon which a Cub Scout begins his or her trek toward the era of light. All right, boys, come over here. You stand there. All right, face the flag. See it up there? Come over here. All right, you do your, do your scout salute. Do the scout salute. Let's say the pledge. Ready? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And now we'll say the scout oath. Ready? It's right here. On my honor, I will do my best to do my duty to God and my country and to obey the scout law, to help other people at all times, to keep myself physically strong, mentally awake, and morally straight. And the scouts are trustworthy, loyal, helpful, Friendly, courteous, kind, obedient, cheerful, thrifty, brave, clean, and reverent. Good job, guys. <clears throat> so, 
The trail of scouting lies ahead of you, but don't be afraid. We won't have to do it alone. You'll have lots of help from your Aquila. Aquila can be your parents, your den leader, your pastor, or even me, your cub master. We will help you along the trail, helping you to become successful. As a symbol of your achievement and becoming a member of this pack, I ask my assistants to give you the colors of the Cub Scouting to seal your rank of Bobcat in Pack 1517 at Lutheran Church of the Resurrection and to remind you of the foundation the Bobcat rank represents. The blue, turn around, line up here. The blue is from the sky. The blue paw print of the bobcat on your forehead represents the spirit of the bobcat and to remind you to do your best on the Cub Scout trail. The yellow is from the sun. The yellow marks under your eyes will help you to see the light of the Cub Scout trail and symbolize the bright spirit of Cub Scouting. The white on your nose is for purity and to help you know right from wrong as you go along the Cub Scout trail. The red mark on your chin is for courage to always speak the truth. Finally, the green mark on each cheek symbolizes nature and the need to live in harmony with the great outdoors that God has given us as stewards. Remember your marks, Bobcats, and have fun along the Cub Scout trail and always remember to do your best. Your parents stand here with you to show they are proud of you and that they are there to help you just like they helped you earn your Bobcat badge. <laughs> parents, will you present this Bobcat badge to your son, making him an official Cub Scout? The privilege will be yours for every badge he earns. We expect you will lurk, work alongside your son as they navigate the Cub Scout trail. Go ahead and present them their badges. Good job, guys. You earned it. And please join me in congratulating these Cub Scouts and their achievement on their trail of scouting. A reading from Jeremiah, the 29th chapter. For surely I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Plans for, the wel for your wel welfare and not for harm, to give you a future with hope. Then when, when you call upon me and come and pray to me, I will hear you. When you search for me, you will find me. If you seek me with all your heart, I will let you 
find me, says the Lord. Here ends the reading. A reading from Romans, the fifth chapter. Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in in which we stand. We boast in our sharing of the glory of God, and not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, and their sufferings produce endurance, and endurance produces character. Character produces hope. Hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. Here in the reading. The Holy Gospel according to 1 Peter, the first chapter. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By By his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. And into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who are being protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, even if now for a little while you have, been, you have suffered various trials so that the genuineness of your faith Test being more precious than gold, that though perishable is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy. For you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Therefore, prepare your minds for action, discipline yourselves, set all your hope on the grace that Jesus Christ will bring you when he is revealed. The Gospel of the Lord. Please bow your heads. Dear Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for bringing us together to worship and praise you. Let us reflect on the words that we hear and find ways to apply them to our own lives and remain humble as we go about our days. In your name we pray, amen. Well, I forgot my water, but (laughs) I can go on. When Miss Cindy asked if I would write the sermon for you Sunday, I said, sure, without really thinking about it. I'm sure I could stand up and talk about my faith, what my church means to me, the youth. But the problem is, when I sat down to actually write it, nothing came to mind. There are so many things to talk about. Do I talk about how my faith has guided me as a teenager, or how music brings us closer to God? That's when I looked at the day's gospel. It was a message of hope, hope in Christ. And hope is something we all need right now. I've spent the past few months working on scholarship applications and college applications. With that comes a lot of stress. It's a lot of paperwork. A lot of paperwork. Everyone has stresses. The things that cause stress see, all seem bigger as you get older. Well, the thing, um, excuse me, the thing that I worry a four-year-old are not the same as worries a teen or a college student or even give stress to parents and grandparents. The things, but the thing is, the view of those stresses is similar. The biggest stress on a small child may seem insignificant to us, but to them, it's the hardest thing they've gone through. 
The same goes for the stress of a teen with school and friends and just generally being a teenager. The same again for adults with everyday stresses that y'all face. But luckily, there is someone there in control of your stresses, Jesus Christ. The answer to everything. Remember, if you don't know the answer to the question, the answer is Jesus. <laughs> Today's gospel states, in this you rejoice, even if now for a little while you have to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith be more precious than gold, and that though perishable as tested by fire may be found result in praise and glory and honor and when Jesus Christ is revealed. Your sufferings now are what test you and keep you, your strength strong. It's what gives us hope, hope for the future, hope for better times. Another verse came to my mind when I was writing this. This one is special to me and to a lot of people. It's Romans 8, 8, 18. Yet what we suffer now is nothing compared to the glory he will reveal to us later. Our sufferings are nothing compared to what we have ahead of us. The fear and sorrow, the worry and stress, we can have hope that the glory of God and Christ make it all pale in comparison. Our world is at a turning point. On the brink of war, we have a lot to worry about. From the small things like gas prices to the fear of what this could lead to, there's so much fear in the world right now. But time and time again, we have faced adversity and we will prevail. Lean on God, for he is our rock, the strong foundation he is. Yet what we suffer now is nothing compared to the glory he will reveal to us later. God bless you all and God bless our world. Amen. We believe in God. We believe in Jesus Christ. We believe in the Holy Spirit.
Today we pray for all people. We give thanks for our church family, for the children in our congregation and their innocence and enthusiasm, for our youth who share their gifts and talents, and for the adults who lead us and guide us. Lord, we thank you for our parents who love us, support us, and care for us daily. We thank you for our youth leaders and Sunday school teachers who mentor us, encourage us, and love us. We pray for those people who are often overlooked, the hungry, the lonely, and the sick, that they will know your healing love and be supported by the care of community. We hope and believe that prayer changes everything, and we pray for change in the world, that anger and fear would be changed into compassion and trust. We hope that prayer changes us too, that prejudice would change into humility, that hearts that are broken would become stronger, and that morning would in the right time turn into dancing. So we offer you our prayers this day, these spoken ones, that those unspoken ones that have unsettled into our hearts, if not yet our voices. God has poured out his grace and love and peace through Christ. Let us also share that grace among ourselves. Peace be with you.
Blessed are you, O Lord our God, maker of all things. Through your goodness you have blessed us with these gifts. With them we offer ourselves to your service and dedicate our lives to the care and redemption of all that you have made. For the sake of him who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord. Sharing our life, he lived among us to reveal your glory and love, that our darkness should give way to his own brilliant light. And so with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. <laughs> In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks and he broke it. And gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Our Father,
may the body and blood of our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Let us pray. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us through this gift in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you his peace. As you leave this place of worship, be people of hope. Let hope live in your heart and share in the hope of Christ with all you meet. 
Now, go in peace and serve the Lord.